Hello and welcome to this weekly briefing on coronavirus in schools for parents and staff from the National Education Union. My name is Kevin Courtney and I'm one of the two Joint General Secretaries of the Union. We're going to be reporting on what happens to data as a result of the Big Bang opening of schools. We supported a phased reopening, but we think the government may have gone too far and too fast with getting everyone back at the same time before cases had fallen sufficiently. We're going to be reporting on what happens to COVID cases. In each week, we're reporting for the week previously because that's what the government issues. So in this week, we're talking about the situation before schools opened. Next week, we'll be able to report on the impact of the first week of opening. But this slide shows what we're concerned about. You can see that when schools opened in September, cases began to rise. When universities began to open, they went up even faster. They only then started to fall again as a result of that national lockdown in November. They didn't fall fast because schools weren't in the lockdown, but they fell a bit. Then they really increased as the new variant spread and there was that opening over Christmas. It has taken this huge national lockdown to get the cases falling again. We hope that continues. We'll be reporting on this on a weekly basis. We opposed the wider opening of schools on the 3rd of January, and that was because cases were so high, shown by these red colours. They also varied a lot across the country. We'll be reporting on any change to regional patterns in this weekly series. We'll talk about what happens to school aged children. The red line here is secondary children, the blue line primary. You can see both lines increase in September. The red line going up really quite sharply. And you can see on the red line a slight decline at the October half term and then another decline during the national lockdown. Even though schools weren't closed, the national lockdown did manage to reduce cases in schools. But then that really sharp peak in secondary age children as the new variant spread. We're also concerned about this black line and its relationship to the blue and red. When you look in the middle of this graph, during the national lockdown, when schools were open and other areas were closed, you can see the red line and the blue line leading. They are in front of the black line. Cases in schools were increasing and they led to increases in community. That's one of our concerns, that schools can again act as vectors of transmission and increase cases elsewhere. We will report on hospitalizations declining sharply and deaths declining sharply. We don't expect that pattern to change very quickly because these are what scientists call lagging indicators. You have to have been ill a few weeks ago to be hospitalized a few weeks before that to be dying and cases did fall that couple of weeks ago so we don't expect these figures to change quickly but we will report on them. We'll also report on school attendance because this is the other problem if we get this wrong if we open too fast and cases spread is that then children are sent home because they are positive or a close contact and on this chart you can see that in September at the left hand side School attendance was quite high, not at its normal levels, which is 95%, but still quite high. But after the half term break, you can see that because cases had spread, attendance dropped because schools were required to send home children who were positive or who were close contacts of the children who were positive. And that on the on the purple line there for secondary schools, you can see attendance was down at around 75%, so a quarter of secondary children were actually at home for most weeks of the back end of the autumn term. Let's hope that doesn't happen again. We need more mitigations in school to stop the virus spreading so that we don't get back to that situation. On the right hand side of this graph, you can see what's happened in schools from January to March. Because schools have obviously not been completely closed, they've been open to key worker and vulnerable children. The purple line for secondary children is around 5%. The, the green line for primary children has got up to around 25%. 
but even at those levels you can have some good social distancing. From this Monday the 8th of March social distancing between children in schools is effectively over. We have very high class sizes in, in small and cramped classrooms so social distancing is a thing of the past. That means we need different and additional mitigations if we're going to stop spray cases spreading. There is obviously the very good news about vaccination and we'll talk about this every week as well. Now 40% of all adults are vaccinated. It's very high among 70 year olds, nearly 100%. And now 55 year olds can get vaccinated. Each time a lower age group is up for vaccination, we will email all of our members in that age group with a link to the, to the NHS vaccine booking website and encourage our members to get booked on as quickly as they can. Schools should support you in getting vaccinated. It is very definitely a social good. The NEU will also continue to promote its school COVID map. That's because sometimes in these presentations we'll be talking about national averages and there is so much local variation and you can find the case around your local school by looking at schoolcovidmap.org.uk. There is much else that the National Education Union is doing. At our coronavirus pages, we talk about how to make schools as COVID secure as possible, given the government restrictions. And we're also talking about the very best sort of education recovery that our children need. Thank you for listening. Thank you for support for the National Education Union. Let's keep working to make schools and colleges as COVID secure as possible and give all of our children the best possible education recovery.